Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. A few reminders before we start. So to avoid distractions during the lecture, kindly follow these instructions. So kindly please keep your mic on mute, turn off your video camera. Then if you have questions, send to us by typing in the chat box. We will answer your questions during the Q&A session. If you're watching via Facebook Live, kindly send your questions through the comment section in the video stream. Thank you, everyone, and let's enjoy the knowledge sharing today. I will be now giving the time to Dr. Victoria Grace Dimakali, uh, as she will be our moderator for this evening. Thank you, everyone. Dr. Hello, good evening, everyone. And welcome to this Qualimed Health Talk hosted by the Vision and Laser Center. So this webinar is actually the first in this series to focus on the eyes. So it's a very special night for us. Because March is also actually Glaucoma Month, tonight we will be learning about glaucoma and other common eye problems in the elderly. I'm Dr. Victoria Dimakali, a cornea and external disease specialist here at the Vision and Laser Center, and I'll be your moderator for the evening. So our next speaker is uh, Dr. Noel Carino, my mentor in cornea and external disease, as well as a specialist in cataract and refractive surgery. He will be introducing our guest speaker for tonight. So let me give the floor to Dr. Noel. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think Dr. Lilibeth Maravilla made it. So let me give the floor to Dr. Ra to give our opening remarks. Uh, hello, good evening everyone. Yes, I'm sorry I was a bit late. Uh, I had to, to see a patient at the wards. So good evening everyone. Um, uh, welcome to this uh, first webinar by, uh, to be handled by the uh, section of ophthalmology, of course, under the Department of Surgery. And for tonight, we have a very interesting uh, topic which uh, would actually tackle on the common eye problems in the elderly. Uh, this is a, a very common um, complaint of uh, the elderly population. I myself being a cardiology handle, cardiologist handle almost 80% uh, of, uh, of my patients are, are, are elderly. So these patients would usually complain to us of cloud divisions, of uh, sudden eye pain, of recurring headache. Sometimes they will complain to you of irritated eyes or red teary eyes or um, intermittent vision loss. Uh, oftentimes, um, we as internists will uh, approach it systemically. Of course, uh, we see the eyes as a, a point of entry on our assessment of a more systemic disease. Uh, but uh, most of the time, uh, our eyes will tell us a lot of uh, our patient's risk factors uh, and its control. So for tonight, uh, this uh, discussion on the different eye problems in the elderly is so a welcome to everyone, both to us doctors to learn more uh, by the, the uh, lecture of our expert ophthalmologists and as well as to our patients so that they can identify when they should be consulting us uh, for such a complaint. So I want to thank in advance uh, the section of ophthalmology, of course, with Dr. Noel Carino here and the rest of the team and uh, to our speaker uh, for preparing for this evening's session. So back to you. Thank you, Dr. Ra, for the welcome remarks. Thank you for making it. Po. So next is Dr. Noel who will introduce the main speaker. Hello, good evening everyone. I'm here to present our speaker for tonight. And before I present our speaker, I can actually relate with Dr. Maravilla because we've been we all deal with uh, elderly patients. And uh, funny thing about uh, dealing with older patients is syempre, they all want to have um priority, no, because senior sila, but however, all of almost all our patients are seniors. 
and of course all of them have their senior discounts no so we uh, we are actually very happy when we deal this with this um age group of patients now going back to our speaker dr joseph manuel cruz is a graduate of the ust pre med and medical degree he is also the chief resident when he graduated and at the same time after which he took up masters in health administration furthermore he took fellowship in glaucoma at two institutions the ramon picahal hospital in madrid as well as the national university hospital at singapore with the renowned uh, dr paul chu i would say he's a uh, dr cruz is an ophthalmologist but at the same time i would say he's also a the teacher a teacher in the same sentence he is he served as a resident training director at the kirino medic memorial medical center and also served as the chief section of cataract surgery in the same institution he was also affiliated with the medical city as associate chief in the section of glaucoma personally i do not no uh jonel very well we just came from the same high school and i know we have uh, a lot of common friends however what i know more about jonel are the lot uh, a, a lot of his graduates from kirino were absorbed in our eye center and i know that uh this all of this his products are very are very good and i believe if the product is good then cer certainly our mentor is also very good so with for with with this i'd like to introduce dr manuel cruz on his lecture on glaucoma and the common eye problems in the elderly vicky thank you you can go ahead thank you dr noel so uh, let's have the main talk now by dr cruz yes um uh... Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Carino, for those very kind words. And Dr. Grace Di Macali as well. And to our Medical Director of QualiMed for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge of a topic that has been very dear to my heart. I have learned to love, respect, even at times fear it because it is certainly a scourge of our times, primarily because it is a disease unfortunately that to this day really does not have any cure and and hence uh my uh love hate relationship uh with this disease let me just share my screen Okay, so as I mentioned, I have uh, been practicing uh, uh, ophthalmology for more than two decades now, perhaps just a little less than, than Dr. Carino, <laughs> but I have been practicing uh, the art of uh, glaucoma uh, almost, uh, but almost 25 years uh, from now. And uh, as I mentioned, this disease really is something that a lot of us uh, are maybe aware, but not quite enough. Because the first thing that a lot of us, as I am sure, would be asking is, do I have it? Meron ba tayong glaucoma? Uh, fortunately, as what Dr. Di Makali had mentioned a while ago, this month of March, uh, for every month of March, actually, every year, is the month of glaucoma. And the number one thing that us glaucomatologists uh, are tasked to do, actually, is to create better awareness of the disease to the public. And so... That's what we are trying to do for this evening. We start, of course, with what are the things that we need to do? Anong kailangan nating dapat malaman? 
what are the things that we need to avoid anong mga dapat iwasan and what are and what are the things that we can do to treat not mind you to cure at the moment uh, the disease itself so anong pwedeng gamot para dito sa sakit na ito so what is glaucoma basically uh, it is a sickness or an illness that affects the nerve of the eye so ito po yung ugat ng ating mata kung ating pong sisilipin ang likuran ng ating mata, isa sa mga bahaging makikita po natin ay itong ugat nating mga mata. Now, this is such an integral part of our vision. Why? Because primarily, this is the pathway to which our visual signals are delivered to the brain. If this is damaged, if you can see how this nerve is, this is a normal-looking nerve. Ito po ang normal na itsura ng ugat ng mata. Pag sinisilip po namin ang likuran ng mata ninyo, pagka po tayo may glaucoma, kung makikita nyo yung susunod na litrato, ito po siya. Maputla po siya. So this is how a, an advanced uh, glaucomatous optic nerve looks like. If we were to view this optic nerve or yung ugat po natin, ang analogy ko po rito ay para po siyang kable ng ating cable TV po. So, alam naman po natin na ang buhay ng ating napapanood sa ating mga telebisyon ay nanggagaling po sa mga signals na, na, na nagmumula sa mga istasyon. Yun ho ang ating napapanood. At ito po ay nakakapunta sa ating mga tahanan sa pamamagitan ng mga kabling nakakonekta po tayo. In other words, kahit po kayo bumili ng pinakamaganda po ninyong telebisyon, kapag ka po may sira po ang kable ng inyong TV, wala rin po kayong mapapanood or malabo po ang inyong pinapanood. So, if we were to cut away uh, the skull of a, an individual and expose the eyeball, what you see there connected to the back is the nerve. No, That's the, that's the extension of the nerve that we saw a while ago uh, from inside the eye. So that one leads directly to the brain. And that is where the vision that is, the visual signals that are set are actually processed so that you know that this is a table, this is a chair, etc. Now, this eyeball has to be maintained by a fluid. Po. So, yung loob po ng ating mata, meron po tayong tubig dyan na ginagawa po ng ating mata bawat segundo. Ang dahilan po nitong tubig ng loob ng mata natin na, hin na ito po ay kakaiba po sa luha natin. Uh, itong tubig ng mata nat sa loob ng mata natin or what we call aqueous humor uh, marami po siyang uh, uh, dahilan kung bakit po siya ay kinakailangan unang-una para po ma-maintain natin yung hugis ng ating mga mata at nagbibigay rin po siya ng nutrition sa ating mga mata at uh, itong tubig po na to ay tulad na banggit ko ay tuloy-tuloy po nating ginagawa Para sa ganun po ay uh, yung presyon sa loob ng, mating, uh, ng ating mata ay ma-maintain po natin. Para sa ganun po ay nananatili po siya sa kanyang konfigurasyon. Pagpalagay nyo na meron po tayong gulong ng kotse. Kung ang gulong ng kotse po natin ay napakababa ng pressure ng linalagay po natin, then naiiba na po ang kanyang hugis. So this fluid is very important to the eye for a number of things. However, like anything else in life, kung ano pong ating pinapasok sa isang bagay, ganun din po dapat ang lumalabas. So that this fluid will be utilized by the eye and upon utilization, 
linalabos po natin siya, sinisikrit po natin. Therefore, creating a balance both with the amount of fluid in the eye and the, the pressure that it uh, uh, creates within the eye. So ito po yung lumalabas sa dalawang sistema po na drainage natin. At ito pong drainage natin, which we call the trabecular mesh drainage system, actually goes out. No? Uh, and this can actually be visualized through special lenses that we have in our clinic. So nakikita po namin yung drainage system ng ating mga mata. No? So pagka kayo po ay nasa klinika po namin. Now, maiyahambing po natin ang drainage po system ng ating mata na tulad po ng gripo na pumupunta po sa ating na uh, uh, pumapatak po sa ating lababo. Okay? So, water is uh, uh, placed uh, on the water basin to which our drainage system here will allow it to flow out. No? Uh, bringing with it all the wastes that comes out from the basin. Ganun din po sa mata. Yung linalabas din po ng ating aqueous humor, meron din po mga waste materials din po linalabas po niya. So that's, the, that's how more or less the uh, drainage system within the eye functions. Now, meron po tayong sitwasyon kung saan po tumataas po yung presyon ng mata natin sapagkat ang problema po ay yung drainage system ng ating mata. Itong presyon ng mata, kapag ka po, uh, katumbas, itutumbas po natin ito sa gulong ng kotse, pag ino-overinflate naman po natin ang ating gulong ng kotse, naiiba na po talaga ang hugis ng gulong, di ba po? And that's the same thing that happens with the eye. If the pressure of the eye is so high or higher than what it should be creating uh, to have this equilibrium or balance within it, no? ang nangyayari po ay nag-iiba na rin po ang hugis ng isang istruktura na napaka-importante sa mata natin at yung po yung optic nerve. So yung pag-iiba ng hugis ng optic nerve is actually equivalent po ito sa damage na po ng nerve. Okay? So numiinipis po siya habang po siya ay nadadamage at namumutla rin po siya. Now, there are two ways in which yung drainage system natin will not work. So the first type po ay yung open type. Now, yung angulo ng mata natin na nabanggit ko po na sinisilip po natin sa special na lente that we have in our eye center po, no? makikita po natin kung wala pong nakaharang po doon. In other words, there are no obstacles that is covering the drain. Similar po dito. Wala naman pong uh, nakatakip po sa drainage, external drainage po ng ating lababo. However, bakit po umaapaw yung tubig natin dito? Sapagkat po, ang may problema po ay doon sa, sa kaloob-loob ng ating drainage. And that is basically what is the open type of glaucoma. Okay? Now, yung pangalawang uri po ng glaucoma naman ay yung tinatawag natin na narrow angle. Ito naman po, meron naman pong obstacle or nakaharang dito. At hindi po malayo na ang karaniwang hadlang po sa paglalabas po ng tubig sa ating mga mata ay yung ninyo ng ating mata or what we call the iris. Because it is the iris, which is the brown, well, for Filipinos, it's the brown iris or for Caucasians, blue or green, that is actually in the periphery where the drainage is. At kung makipat po siya, tulad po na ibang mga mata na makikipot po, madali po siyang maharang, maharangan po yung ating drainage system. So kung itutumbas po natin uli siya sa ating lababo po, then meron po talaga nakaharang po doon sa drain natin. Makipot po siya tuloy, no? kumikipot po siya doon. So that's why it's very important that 
we evaluate the angles, whether it's open or closed, so that that type of glaucoma can be identified. And later on, we can now make certain measures depending on the type of glaucoma. So, yung closed type ng glaucoma, talaga pong ganito po ang itsura po niya. Yan, hindi na po nakakalabas po siya. Saradong-sarado na po siya. So, tulad na nabanggit ko sa inyo, na dedeforma po yung ugat ng mata. Nakikita niyo po rito para na po siyang umuuka, no? lumalalim na po, naiiba na po yung forma at nagda-damage na po siya. So, kung nakikita niyo po sa upper left side picture ng ugat ng mata, at pababa po siya, nakikita po natin na paputla ng paputla ng paputla po siya. At kung titignan po natin siya uh, at the level of the nerve itself, umuuka po siya, lumalalim po. Ibig sabihin, numinipis po siya. So, ito pong condition ng glaucoma ay nakikita tulad ng sabi niya ni Dr. Maravillas sa mga pasyente natin na may mga edad na po. Although, Sasabihin ko lang din po sa inyo na meron din po kami mga glaucoma po na nakikita rin po namin sa mga bagong panganak. Ito po naman ay mga secondary na condition dahil po sa mga uh, mga ating mga ina na nagkakasakit sa unang trimester ng kanilang pagkabuntis. Kadalasan po ay ito po ay napapasa dahil po ay nasa lahi po ng isang tao po ang glaucoma. Uh, sa makatwit po rito sa atin sa Pilipinas, meron po tayong nakikita na ikatlo hanggang ikaapat pa ho nga na henerasyon na may mga pasyenteng may glaucoma. Uh, ito po ay madalas ang uh, sinyalis po na nagbibigay sa atin ng ideya kung may glaucoma o, wala, uh, o kung mataas ang posibilidad na may glaucoma isang pasyente ay kung masyadong mataas ng grado sa mata whether ang taas ng grado ay pagka near or far sighted. Maraming mga asyano ang napipinsala sa kondisyon na ito. Meron tayong mga pasyente na pagka naaaksidente po ay nagkakaroon po ng mga secondary type of glaucoma or di kaya yung mga ibang pasyente bigla yung mga naooperahan po minsan po, po sila ay nagkakaroon mga ikalawang uri ng uh, secondary type ng glaucoma po. Marami rin po tayo mga pasyente, lalo na po yung mga may sakit po sa bato or sa kidney po na long time na nag-iinom ng steroids, no? bukod po sa katarata na nagkakaroon po yung ating mga pasyente, nagkakaglaucoma din po sila. Ano po ba ang nararamdaman ng ating mga pasyente? Usually, they don't notice anything. That's why it's important for you to understand that the common quotation in patients with glaucoma is that it is a thief in the night. In other words, you don't feel anything, but you're losing something. So whether it's open or in some cases closed, people don't really feel anything, the type of glaucoma. But there are those uh, individuals na they would be going to our emergency room, uh, complaining of severe headache, sudden blurring of vision, uh, nauseated, nagsususuka sila pagdating sa, sa, sa emergency room, uh, para po sila nagkakaroon ng uh, bahaghari sa paligid ng kanilang uh, ilaw na nakikita or parang nagigilo po effect. Ito po ay sinyalis po ng mataas na mataas na presyon ng mata. Ang presyon po ng mata ng, ng normal na individual po ay mula gis hanggang 21 millimeters of mercury po. No? Ito po ang normal pressure. Sa mga uri ng glaucoma tulad ng mga acute type yung nakikita sa emergency room na sobrang sakit at sobrang labo ng paningin, umaabot po sa 60%. So you can imagine, imagine rather, it's uh, six to three times more than what an, a normal individual pressure should be. So makikita po ninyo kung gaano pong maaaring napipinsala ang ugat ng mata ng mga taong ito. 
So kung ito pong nakikita ng mga pasyente natin at ng, ng normal ng mga pasyente natin, ang mga pasyente naman natin na may glaucoma, makikita po natin na ang tagiliran ng kanilang mga paningin ay malabo po. So karamihan po yung mga advanced type na glaucoma, their peripheral vision goes first and therefore some of these individuals are really prone Uh, to develop accidents kasi po hindi nila nakikita yung mga kanto at yung mga gilid po at uh, habang lumalala po yung glaucoma habang na namumutla po ang ugat ng ating mata pawala ng pawala ng pawala po ang ating paningin yung kahuli-huli ang letrato po rito on the lower right hand corner is a vision of a patient which we call Tunnel vision. In other words, kahit po kayo ay may 20-20 vision po, maaaring ganito ko kasama ang inyong glaucoma. Maliit na maliit na lang po nakikita ninyo sa sentro ng inyong paningin. So, to all of us, do not think that if you have 20-20 vision, that you cannot have the worst type of glaucoma. So, what are the things that we should be doing uh, in order to assure ourselves that we have or don't have the disease. Of course, a regular checkup, especially if you have that history in your family. Okay? If uh, there is pain in your eye uh, uh, that you uh, honestly don't know what it is, then certainly that is something uh, of concern and you should have it checked out so that we can check the pressure of your eye and take a look at that nerve as well. So these are the number of things that we can do in the Vision Laser Eye Center. Uh, we can check your vision, of course, and uh, do a complete eye examination. Here we have the specialized uh, microscope to which we can view the microscopic structures of the eye. And we can also check the pressure of your eye through a procedure called tonometry. We can also take a look at your uh, nerve, the optic nerve, through Uh, the procedure called ophthalmoscopy, and we can take a look at the angle structures, you know, where the drainage system is, 360 degrees in your eye, through the procedure called gonioscopy. All of them will take just less than a minute or two minutes to perform. And the one that takes a while, uh, which we request to do, is to check your field of vision. Yung lawak ng paningin po ninyo. Tulad ng nabanggit ko kanina po, maaari po kayo mawala ng paningin ninyo nang wala po kayong nararamdaman po. And the only way to test this is to do a, a, a field of vision evaluation. So para titingnan po natin <coughs> excuse me, kung gano'ng kalawak po ang paningin ninyo na natitira po. <coughs> so ito po ang instrumento namin that we use to check the pressure of the eye. We just put a drop of anesthesia and wala po kayo mararamdaman. We will be able to get how many millimeters of mercury the pressure of your eye would be. By the way, the pressure of the eye changes. No? Ito po hindi constant. It's usually highest in the morning, early morning, and goes down. Uh, it goes down a little bit towards the late afternoon. These are the special lenses that we do, uh, which we just... Uh, again, just put on top of your eye. You won't feel anything at all when we perform this. And we will be able to uh, determine whether or not you have open or closed angle types of glaucoma, if you do have glaucoma. Other types of uh, documentation machines that we have in, in our center will be to take a picture of the nerve of your eye, like the picture na pinakita ko po sa inyo. Uh, these are the other machines that we have that uh, test for the field of vision. And also we get the thickness of the front of your eye because sometimes the thickness of the front of your eye can actually alter the actual pressure of your eye. So knowing this gives us more or less a rough estimate as to what is the true pressure of your eye. So ano po ba ang dapat nating matandaan po when it comes to glaucoma? It is the number one cause of irreversible blindness in the world today. And I'm talking 2022. So 
the, the whatever damage that you get from glaucoma, right now, medical science does not have a cure for giving it back to you. In the same token that right now, uh, yung pung ating mga pasyente na nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na mga spinal cord injury, uh, karamihan po sa kanila ay hindi pa rin nakakalakad. Because like the, the spinal cord, it, it's, it affects the nerves. And ang nerves po ng katawan ng tao, tulad ng ating sariling optic nerve po, cannot regenerate. Hindi po siya tulad ng balat na kapag ka po masugatan, ay bumabalik po siya. So, ang aming uh, uh, pakay po big, bilang mga espesyalista sa glaucoma ay para mapreserba po natin yung natitira po ninyong uh, bista na hindi pa po nadadamage ng inyong glaucoma. Now, paano ba natin ginagamot ang glaucoma? Even if we have no cure, we can control the disease either through medications, either through laser, at kung talagang sobrang sama na po ng kondisyon or advanced type na po siya, we do surgery po. Ito po ay panghabang buhay na sakit. So, I have been practicing uh, glaucoma since uh, 1996 po. And I still have the same patients uh, if they haven't yet uh, passed away. They're still with me up to this day. So, sila po ay nananatili po mga pasyente namin, sinusubaybayan po namin, at uh, we are trying our best no, to keep whatever vision that they have left. Uh, ang paggagamot po ay maaari rin pong panghabang buhay na po. So, ang, ang ating mission sa Glaucoma Month will be to try to detect uh, and to treat the disease, the disease uh, in order to avoid blindness so that your lifestyles will at least be maintained. No? So with that, po, we are kind of hoping that your families, your friends, your loved ones, uh, if ever, need not be affected by this disease if we can detect this early and we're conscious about uh, how this disease will affect our livelihoods. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Dr. Joseph, for that very, very informative talk about glaucoma. So I'm sure lahat tayo madaming natutunan from this talk tonight. Glaucoma is really an underdiagnosed eye condition. Kaya important ang screening, lalo na sa mga matatanda na never pang na-check ang mata. Kasi in my experience kasi, sometimes they attribute this blurring of vision sa pag-edad or sa cataracts and they don't even bother to check kung may ibang condition pa pala sa mata nila. So now the floor is open for any questions for our speaker. Please feel free to type in your questions in our chat box in the Zoom app. So far, there's no questions yet. So I'll open the floor by asking uh, the first question, Dr. Joseph. Uh, in your experience po ba, madami yung elderly patients na na-diagnose nyo with glaucoma na takot magpa-opera? Kasi I also experienced this eh. What do you say to them to encourage them to have surgery? A lot of chair time, definitely. Um, marami pa rin sa ating mga kababayan really do not understand this disease. Remember, uh, the most common things for them, as far as the eyes are concerned, are katarak and malabo mata dahil may grado. That's the most common layman uh, perceptions of eye problems. No, you, told, you ask them, uh, do you have glaucoma? What's that? So sometimes it's very important to dig deep sa, history ng ating mga pasyente and try it for them first to understand what it is and if and when the situation will arise that we cannot control the disease be it uh, through laser uh, less invasive procedures or through medications then that's the time we have to show them uh, what are the chances that they will go blind permanently 
no so in terms of trying to convince people uh, with advanced glaucoma to undergo uh, surgery you really have to put in a lot of chair time let them really understand it if they haven't understood it uh, since the time that you've started treating them no i think it's just that no? really getting them to uh, get the the gist of what may happen to them in the future. The beauty naman ngayon kasi is there, uh, especially with the, with the World Glaucoma Association, uh, uh, having a lot of movements to try to send out um, uh, pamphlets and, and, and uh, online paraphernalia to try to educate a lot of people. Mas madali na ngayon talaga para sa mga pasyente na, uh, na sumangayon sa whatever na i-re-recommend namin na treatment, be it uh, conservative or surgical. Thank you for your answer to the question. Uh, is there any other question from our audience? Hi, Janelle. Or our uh, hi, hi. Uh, si Noel, Noel here. So before I go to my question, no, meron din akong konting advertisement. So you showed a lot of machines kanina, no, dun sa lecture mo. And I just want the yung mga tagapakinig natin na malaman na lahat po ng mga machines na yon ay available naman po sa sa Qualimed, dun po sa kwarto ni Dr. Janelle Cruz, katabing katabi lang po noon yung mga makina na pang test po sa glaucoma at iba pong mga sakit no now ang question ko Janelle is um, yung risk factor yung mga nakikinig sa atin ngayon madalas kasi ako sinasabi ko sana wag masaktan yung mga tatamaan sinasabi ko sa mga pasyente if you are female far sighted and over 50 uh, meron kang risk for glaucoma so can can you explain sa amin bakit yung tatlong F na yon at ma malamang meron pang mga iba ay delikado for glaucoma plus na mention mo rin yung isa kanina no yung may history ng glaucoma kasi uh, usually yung tatlong F na yon kasama rin do sa history ng glaucoma sige Jonel ikaw po mag ikaw mag-explain uh -huh. Uh, thank you, Noel, for that question. At marahil, marami rin sa ating mga uh, tagapakinig dito na that probably is a question in their mind as well. So, bakit yung mga far-sighted na mga tao na kadalasan babae at nasa edad 50 ay very prone to develop uh, this type of disease? Specifically po, the angle closure type of the disease. No? For uh, far-sighted individuals po, usually po yan, maliliit po ang kanilang mga mata. No? So very crowded po yung uh, nabanggit ko kanina na tinatawag na anterior chamber kung saan po lumalabas po yung ating, uh, ating aqueous humor or yung tubig sa ating mata. It's very crowded at maaari magkaroon ng sitwasyon kung saan po yung ninyo ng ating mata, the iris, could actually close uh, especially po kasi since uh, very dynamic po ang ating iris po. No? Kapag kayong, kung alam po natin ang ninyo ng mata po natin, ito po ay gumagalaw, uh, lumalaki po siya kapag ka makulimlim ang panahon or lumiliit po siya kapag ka mataas po ang araw. So pagka kum kumukulimlim o ang panahon or yung tinatawag natin na dark room effect, then tumataas po ang presyon ng mata kasi po yung ninyo ng mata ay nagbibigay ng hadlang po sa paglabas ng tubig sa gilid po. So, yun po ang nangyayari. Kaya ito po yung nakikita, lalong-lalong uh, uh, lalo na when they, they got the data o na ito pong mga uri ng mga pasyente na sa ganitong edad, uh, sa ganitong kasarian, nagkakaroon sila ng angle closure type ng glaucoma. Ito naman po yung naiiba doon sa mga karamihan pong mga may open type po. No? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, itong uh, open type po ay mas nakikita actually sa mga Caucasians po natin, ang mga kasama sa bundo. No? Uh, 
there are some Filipinos who are naman ni- nearsighted. Ito naman po yung mga malalabong mata po na kailangan ho lumapit para makakita po sa kanilang uh, na tinitingnan po. Lalo na po yung mga sobrang matataas na grado pong nearsighted po. Ang nangyayari naman po ay ang problema nila ay doon mismo sa drainage. No? Ito pong mga ito, lalong-lalo ng kinakailangan nating talagang suriin ang kanilang family history. Baka merong makalusot na ay meron pala ang kanilang lolo, hindi lang nila alam na nawala na pala ng paningin nang hindi nila alam ang dahilan. Sumasakit na lamang. So, yun ang, uh, yun ang kinakailangan natin suriin. So, yan ho ang mga kailangan nating um, uh, tandaan. No? Yung binabanggit sa atin ni uh, Dr. Carino, yung mga female, 40, and farsighted individuals. Okay, so now we have some questions from the audience. So, the first question is, ano po ang percentage ng success ng surgery for glaucoma based sa experience nyo and sa statistics? Ang success naman po ng aming mga operasyon sa glaucoma, sa buong mundo naman po, uh, I'm, I'm happy to say, hindi naman po tayo nalalayo sa mga ibang eksperto sa buong mundo. No? Uh, mauhusay na po ang ating mga dalubhasa sa glaucoma, lalo na sa mga operasyon. Uh, kung na tatandaan niyo na banggit ni Dr. Carino, dalawang beses pa ako nag-fellowship. Kasi po, yung pinuntahan kong una po ay uh, karamihan po ng mga tao doon ay mga puti. At yung ikalawang pinuntahan ko naman po ay karanayaman naman po ay Chinese community patients po namin doon. So magkakaibang populasyon, magkakaibang uri ng uh, reaksyon, lalong lalo na sa mga operasyon. So, uh, maganda naman po, uh, generally, ang kinakalabasan po ng ating mga operasyon sa glaucoma. Basta po nakukuha po natin sila na maaga. Yun lang naman po ang importante doon. Try to get them to detect them as early as possible because if the advanced stage is there, even if you are able to uh, more or less Uh, control the pressure, which is basically what we can control at this point in time. The pressure of the eye. Kahit na makontrol na natin yan, eh, ito na lang ang nakikita nila, kakakiting na lang. No? The level of the satisfaction of the patient will never be uh, that good. No? Even if you can tell them, oh, I was able to control your pressure, but then you can only see through a small hole already. So, early detection is still the mainstay of uh, 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 fact mainstay factor to determine the true success of uh, of glaucoma surgeries no but basically if you detect them early and uh, before it gets to an advanced stage it, the, the the surgery success is very very high okay. so moving on to the next question is there a certain age or any predisposing risk factors wherein there is a recommendation for routine screening and how often? That's a very good question. Uh, and uh, the answer there is most of the devices that we have, be it the visual field test that I was telling you about and the other uh, device that we also have in our vision laser center, which is the optical coherence tomography. Yun naman po na detect po niya kung gano ka numinipis or gano'ng kakapal pa po yung ugat ng mata tulad na nabanggit ko kung nauuka na po siya o nadedeporma. So we have these devices but currently these devices are uh, they're age-based uh, age uh, rather yeah, age-based population. In other words, uh, ang mga tests po uh, na ginawa nila ay mula 18 anos po hanggang pataas. So yung accuracy nila po ay is from 18 years old and above. So anyone younger than that, it may not necessarily uh, be a good determinant of whether or not uh, you have glaucoma or if you do have glaucoma, if it's getting worse. So in those cases, no, we just have to do uh, just a photo of the nerve uh, regularly and check the pressure uh, and just 
monitor them closely. But it's usually 18 years old and above. Kung pwede na sila, let's say you have a history in your family. Uh, let's say uh, let's say I have uh, glaucoma. Then there's a 50% chance my children will have glaucoma as well. So I would have my children uh, as early as 18 years of age already undergo these tests. But if they're younger than that, at least go to the glaucoma specialist to have yourself evaluated, even though these detecting devices are only as accurate as 18 years old for those 18 years old and above. Okay, next question. For those diagnosed with glaucoma, but with a history of corneal ulceration during earlier years, what are the treatment options? Well, uh, as long as the as long as the corneal ulcer has been treated and it is not active, and I think uh, Vicky can Grace can actually uh, and Noel can probably answer this better. No, as long as it's not active, then there's no uh, there's no reason why we could not uh, treat the uh, glaucoma. No, um, uh, in the same manner as those uh, without the corneal ulcers. Now, if it's active, then maybe there are certain drugs that we might not be giving, no? especially those carbonic anhydrase inhibitors that might uh, affect the cornea itself uh, in terms of its clarity. So we try to avoid using those. But uh, other than that, if the ulceration is not active, it's becoming a uh, leucomatous, then, then there's no reason why we cannot do uh, glaucoma. So... Uh, in terms of surgical uh, interventions, if the ulceration is uh, inactive but the scarring is extensive, uh, then we might be limited with visualization, especially if we are to put uh, as, uh, as a surgical option the utilization of uh, glaucoma drainage devices or even uh, minimally invasive glaucoma devices. So, uh, but other than that, in terms of medications, no, there's actually not much difference. Yes, and the uh, glaucoma treatment, glaucoma surgery doesn't really involve a big part of the cornea. So, uh, it, it's a high chance naman that you can have a glaucoma surgery if it's not too big and not active. So, next question. Are there practical measures to prevent or delay development of glaucoma? Well, again, as I mentioned a while ago, uh, as long as we're able to detect them early, uh, uh, we could actually start uh, treatments immediately, be it uh, uh, medications or laser treatment. Uh, this is the era of what we call the light study, L-I-G-H-T. We have a special laser actually uh, that has been formulated for open angle types of glaucoma. And it has been recommended that we do this uh, uh, non-invasive procedure first before we start medications on patients. And, but then the option to continue with medications will always be there. No? Um, so early detection uh, is always the key. Okay, thank you. So from our Facebook Live, there's also another question. Ako po ay may glaucoma, 10 years na halos po. May pag-asa pa po bang makakita ulit? Wala po sa lahi namin ang glaucoma. Uh, ang importante lamang po ay uh, malaman natin po kung gaano kasama na po yung condition na yan. No? So in other words, importante po na maiklassify natin whether your condition is mild, moderate, or advanced. And depende po kung nasaan po tayo nakalagay doon po tayo uh, mag-iisip kung ano po ang kinakailangan nating treatment na magawa para sa inyo. So, importante lang din po na magawa natin yung classification. At ito po ay magagawa natin kung dadaan po kayo sa mga, glauco mga glaucoma testing devices tulad ng meron namin sa Vision Laser Center para po uh, malaman po natin yun at... Uh, we can give the appropriate treatment for you. Okay. So our last question so far, is there a certain age for mandatory glaucoma screening? So earlier you mentioned po that uh, it depends also on the family history. 
kung meron sa lahi kasi it's a big part. Yes, uh, definitely. No? So as long as there is uh, a history, ano na yun, para sa akin, outright na yun na kinakailangan uh, ma-screen na sila for glaucoma. Okay. So if uh, there's no other questions coming, I'll, I'll leave the floor open for one more minute or so. From our Facebook live po ba? May questions pa? Wala na po. Okay. So, I think uh, we can close the night already. So, let me give the floor to Attorney Nirmala Vanguardia, our Chief Operating Officer. Uh, so, uh, sorry, so, uh, we'll have our Certificate of Appreciation first. So, thank you for these certificates. Uh, for me and Dr. Joseph, so we are presenting this certificate to do Dr. Joseph Manuel M. Cruz for his participation and valuable contribution. Sorry, may pop up lang po. For his expertise and valuable role as speaker during the webinar entitled Glaucoma and Other Common Eye Problems in the Elderly. Given this 28th day of February 2022 via Zoom virtual event. We'll just send this to Dr. Cruz later. Okay, so for our closing remarks, let me give the floor to Attorney Nirmala Vanguardia, our Chief Operating Officer at Qualimed Hospital, Santa Rosa. Thank you, Dr. Dimakali. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to greet everyone. Uh, have a pleasant evening. Of course, I'd like to thank our expert speaker for tonight, Dr. Janelle Cruz for taking the time to join us in our advocacy on health education by sharing his knowledge to our community and making it all very easy for us no? with all the illustration and even translating it to the local language, no? Tagalog. So I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Dimakali no? for facilitating and also to Dr. Noel Carino for leading this activity and helping us organize this. My appreciation also goes to all our doctors present here tonight from the different specialties for taking time to understand and learn even if it is not within their own specialty so that they will be able to further provide holistic care to all our patients. Thank you to our nursing and VLC team led by Mr. Mike Alamay. Thank you as well to all our patients and our partners who are present here tonight. I hope that through this webinar, we are able to encourage you more to take full control of your health, especially on the early detection of glaucoma and other common elderly illness as discussed by Dr. Cruz tonight. Uh, for all your ideas, care needs or your family's uh, needs in case you are experiencing any eye discomfort or any condition. Uh, we are proud to say that in Qualimed Hospital Santa Rosa, we have a full range of eye specialists and subspecialists. And they are uh, fully supported now with the right technology. In fact, uh, our vision and laser center services actually offers all these um, diagnostic um, procedures. No? We have the fundus photography. The FA all are, are posted on the screen. No? We do biometry, perimetry. Uh, sorry, I, I would have wanted no, to, to explain para sa anto, but uh, just feel free no, to visit us in uh, Qualimed Santa Rosa, uh, for our ophthalmologist uh, clinic schedule and inquiries for our vision and laser center. The number uh, is posted on the screen, so feel free in case you have a hard time accessing through our phone lines. We, also, we are also accessible through our Facebook page and our messenger. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, and hope all of us will have a, a restful evening. Thank you. Have a great day and great evening.